I am ready. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, today we are going to be talking about the integrated curricula for middle school, high school, and community-based organizations that NASEF offers. So really quick introductions here. I don't look at a thing like that. Hi everyone, I'm over here, Kevin Brown, eSports Program Specialist. I work with Orange County Department of Ed and I'm an officer of NASEF, North American Scholastic eSports Federation. To my right. And I am Jarrell Botok, the Curriculum Specialist and eSports Scholastic Instructional Coach for both the Orange County Department of Education and NASEF as well. Um, so really quickly, Kevin, you wanna talk about our mission and vision? Sure. Many of you may be aware, I'm seeing lots of names and faces that I recognize. Our whole mission is up there for you to see. It's something, it's based around all students. This is not focused on just one subset of students or one kind of playing style. It is open for all students. What we provide for you for free is an opportunity to acquire curriculum and other tools to give back to your kids, to give them the tools to exceed in life. Like it says there, critical skills in communication, collaboration, problem solving, all to get ahead. Our vision is just that, to make kids game changers in life, to make them beyond and beyond, say, above and beyond the game. All right, and we are a uh, large inter-institutional network of partners, all led by the Sam Motley Foundation. Again, working together to provide these opportunities for young people through Scholastic Esports. So you'll see here multiple, multiple partners, um, and we're continuing to grow around the globe. So a quick overview in terms of what we'll be discussing today. We're gonna to dive a little bit into some of the research with the Connected Learning Lab um, around what they found in regards to students' learning outcomes. Uh, we'll dive into sort of the premise of Scholastic Esports and really get into the nitty gritty of what NASEF has in terms of curriculum and resources that are available to all of you. Um, so Kevin, you wanna talk about the research? Sure, so NASEF began, first of all, as a research project. This goes back to about four years ago, and before we even set our foot into gameplay and starting groups or clubs, um, the Sam Rowley Foundation reached out to the leading researchers in esports, informatics, human interface with computers, neurobiology, that are all housed at the University of California of Irvine. And lead on this team of brilliance is Dr. Constance Steinkuhler. So she and her group, Connected Camps, Connected Learning Lab, uh, work to help shape their research forms where we go in terms of curriculum. So what we tend to offer is based on solid information, years of collected data and outputs that we can see with kids, something that's measurable and uh, proof of concept. So what they offer us, and many of you have seen the slides, so if you have before, please pardon me, but for those who have not, uh, you would hear Dr. Steinkuhler say in her video that it's simply this, that esports actually is good for kids. It is not just a humble pastime or a waste of time, but it actually calls upon different parts of the brain to do different kinds of things. All of them you can see here on the screen, but we know while gaming will give kids uh, fluency, if you will, in different kinds of technology. They have to understand PCs, maybe take them apart, put them back together, have to be able to communicate across different kinds of platforms, different kinds of gaming consoles. It's more than that. They are actually in practice and using math skills at higher levels. They don't call it pre-calculus, but that's what they're doing when they're doing squad lineups and analysis. Um, they're using English and sometimes other languages in gameplay uh, this goes above and beyond what they're doing in terms of writing a research paper, standing up in front of other peers to deliver information. They're having to process visually and verbally what's going on on the screen, react with their hands, react with their mouths and their thoughts. So gaming pulls all of this together in a very unique way. We liken this though, we look back uh, at 70 years of data that comes from sports, traditional sports, ball sports, wet sports like water polo and swimming. And we can see that it does have an influence in the way we can look at esports. We know that traditional sports typically command the need for a higher GPA. To be on a club or in a team in high school or college, you have to have a certain grade point average. You can't just be a ball hog. You've got to be able to do and show something else. Traditional sports typically do compel this feeling of unity, right? A team gets together and they feel good about putting on a uniform like we have today and being able to represent for our team. We're seeing that happens in esports as well. And actually the kids we're pulling in are the ones who typically don't, can't, or won't play a sport for whatever reason, but they can find affinity, they can find unity in these esports clubs that grow on campuses. They also will be the ones to 
chase down through a seven hour day, uh, you know, things that are important to them, intrinsic versus extrinsic uh, realities and needs for them. So our year one research shows just this. If you just let your screen take over and look at it, blur your eyes on the little tiny print, blue and green represent science and math. And what we're showing in this graph is uh, every year after having played seasons, our researchers go out, they poll the students who played, they poll the coaches who worked on team, the general managers, and they want to know, so what was it like playing? What, the things you learned during your scholastic year, how did you use those or improve those? And they would get what you would anticipate, a bump in science and math, blue being science, uh, science green being math we get a lift that they, they can point to the fact that they have used the skills that they've learned during the scholastic year. Even yellow, where you've got uh, English language arts, kids whose first language may not be English. They say, I feel more comfortable speaking the language. I have to for my team. I get the jokes, but I also get the plays we have to run. So that gets a little bit of lift. What was surprising throughout the research, and this persists even into going into year four research now, is this lift that is given to social emotional learning that teams who play in clubs and now increasingly in middle schools where we find ourselves, that students are reporting that they're better able to moderate themselves. They are conscious of and aware of what they choose to say in chat and over an open mic, that they are more tolerant of new players coming into their space, of different kinds of kids that make up their space and who wants the game, and their interactions with adults, that they don't just mouth off because the oldest person in the room can't be cool or can't help, but they can actually get uh, advice and learning and better gameplay when they interact with coaches and others. So this is surprising and continues to encourage us. As we go through, this is more of a breakdown that actually gives stats and numbers, again, in those different quotients, blue being STEM, uh, green being school affiliation. Kids now through esports are more likely to get into other aspects of school if there is an esports club on campus. Their social skills are going up. That's what you see in red up to a factor of 3x, which is amazing. So again, the kids who typically lean up against the wall, the wallflowers don't see themselves anywhere in campus, are now more likely to get involved because they can recognize their people, their kind of group. Uh, interesting to see the self-regulation and the personal moderation part, that this idea about emotional regulation, yes, it's dropping, they are less likely to pop off. They are more likely to sit with themselves and think about, uh, maybe I ought to choose my choice of words. I recognize that new person on the team is really new and I don't know him or her, but they're learning and I get that and I can tolerate that more likely. And the use of 21st century skills in terms of soft skills, what's needed in business, what's needed to be a good digital citizen, also getting a very large lift throughout this. So is this over to you, Jarrell? Uh, yeah, so ultimately through the research findings, you know, what we've seen is that esports can be utilized as an intentional vehicle for learning. And ultimately what drives that sort of premise is what we're doing here is meeting kids where they are, right? We're not hijacking their space. We're not, you know, like as, as others would say, you know, kind of taking over what they already are doing, but rather celebrating culture and the community that is already happening around games. And how can we utilize that to really celebrate again the learning outcomes that are already happening. And so through that, NACEF has put together multiple opportunities as well as resources for uh, different organizations in high school, middle school, and increasingly in community-based organizations. And part of what we try to do here is really think about how can we bring uh, learning and intentional play together? And that really defines what Scholastic Esports is all about, um, you know, and this can look differently in every single community. And so what we try to talk about, you know, even before we talk about the how, even we, before we talk about playing any games, ultimately it's about building a culture of scholastic esports in your programs. And this includes a vast community of educators, students, families, and administrators. Um, and essentially it's a play between curriculum and clubs, right? And I'd like to talk about this as kind of a spectrum just because you know, again, every community is different. Every student has their own particular interests. Um, and then obviously your educational programs have different learning outcomes and goals. And so looking at it uh, for this particular webinar, we're really gonna be focusing on the curricular side of things and looking at, you know, what are some ways that you can take esports and integrate it into your classrooms? So Kevin, do you wanna talk about a little bit of the journey in terms of establishing the curriculum foundation 
the journey was a nice way to put it. It was an uphill boulder roll. Let's call it what it is. So just for the state of California, many of you here are on, uh, from California on the call, but um, think about this for your own states as I walk through this. We have many lenses by which curriculum is judged and assessed, uh, especially at the high school level, as being worthy of bearing credits to be able to allow us students to get in, to be college ready, to get into the college or university of their choice. So we have common core standards, a binder probably this big in everybody else's uh, realm as well. We also have career tech education standards, what we looked at, next generation science standards, ISTE, so science and technology standards. And then very important in California, there's a big mandate in our state about the whole student. So this idea about addressing the social emotional concerns of students, recognizing that they are not just there to take a test and learn to that and be able to pop out scores, that there's a human being in there that also needs to be considered as part of that learning paradigm. So those were the lenses by which, if you click through, we began to design a curriculum based on this model you see here. Many of you have seen this uh, infographic before, but let me just unpack it for you quickly. We typically think that esports is all about the player and the game. So they're in the middle of that diagram. And I liken that to saying, uh, if you considered NASCAR was only the car, the driver, and 500 left-hand turns. Obviously, the sport of racing is so much more than that. There are so many different kinds of work that are involved to be able to get that car and driver ready to run those 500 laps and eventually get the checkered flag. So it is with esports. And what we've done with that research team, the esports professionals we work with, and different teachers working at, California, at Orange County Department of Ed, was come up with these four domains you see listed there in the white circles. So the thought is that these four domains, and now we're identifying a fifth one, kind of a membrane that overlays all of this, health and wellness. These five domains actually rain out very e easily, very nicely line up with California Career Tech Education Pathways. So in terms of curriculum, we look to these domains to say, if you can line your curriculum up with an aspect of this infographic, if you can see where English or science or even history leans into part of this, we have an inroad now to be able to draft curriculum. Let's go to the next one, please. So this is what it looked like. Our first shot out of the gate was taking English language arts. We thought that that would be easiest because we have some tools at our disposal. For example, in ninth grade, an incoming freshman learns in the English classes about the development, the creation of a narrative, the literary device that is a narrative. A hero goes through a journey. The journey has a beginning. Uh, an ascending bit of action. The hero descends into hell and has all kinds of challenges, finds a wise person. She loads him up with secret sauce. He goes and fights a, a, a great big battle and comes back to his community changed. Sounds just like what we do in a video game, isn't it? When you start, I see James O'Hagan on the call. He's going through a Legend of Zelda jag right now. So he is playing Link and he's going through these things as that hero. It very much closely bumps up to what the English language arts were teaching. So we decided to pair career tech education plus English language arts with an esports spin. And you can see what we've done. We've lined up the years where students would be exposed to these things. The classes we wrote are then vetted through a university office of the president, so the University of California system. And they all receive the blessing that yes, the English classes we're purporting, an English class that focuses on a career tech education pathway with the interesting condiment of esports written all throughout it, now bears university entrance credit, kids actual high school credit for these classes. Go ahead and move to the next one. Yes, this is all broken up. It, it, the way the classes are written, are written now is large units, uh, individual lessons and key activities, which can be broken up and taken out as just particular modules, one activity that a teacher might say is perfect for the way she teaches a particular class. It can be broken out into a series of weeks. We've had schools take on entire semesters and full years of this at this point. So again, anything NASEP develops is put out there for you all for free. It is meant to be an additive process. It is in no way prescriptive. We know that it works as designed. If you took this out of the box and said, I want my year 10 sophomores to be able to take your English class as it's written, it works for you. It might be needed, or rather it might be needed English. It may be necessary to uh, look at your state standards and make sure that those standards are being met at that grade level. But by and large, there, there's a large parity that drafts across. It's just that it's ready to go. But teachers like to teach what they like to teach the way they like to teach it. So we fully anticipate there'll be a lot of ripping and rewiring and that's perfectly okay. We actually invite you to do that. So 
here is the next big move. You would imagine once we got English language arts and got it approved, the question was, what else you got? Can you help me in history? Can you help me in math or sciences? This is our play. It's very small. We'll make sure that this deck is available to you. We're recording this so you'll be able to take it out and blow it up on your screen. But what you're looking at is a, consider it like an undergraduate degree starting in high school, starting as a freshman. The left-hand column are the CTE courses that you would want to take as an incoming freshman based upon that infographic you saw earlier, knowing that there are career pathways you could chase down. Uh, this one's written for fandom art and media. So if you're an incoming freshman, you love to doodle, you do 3D design on your own computer, you begin dabbling in video gaming, you play Dungeons and Dragons and you're always drawing the next new character variation. This course might be for you. So you could take through your four years in high school, a progression of classes that are all rated for level that gets you college entry credit that also follows a career tech education pathway that gives you a, a skill that you could actually parlay as a senior, walk right out into um, the workplace and have a skill set that can be immediately employable. On the right hand side is really the hat trick. We've got all the courses in California considered A through G, social science, math, sciences, integrated math, uh, other courses. There are white spots that allow for students to pick um, what is it, electives and other things they might be doing. But the right hand side is really amazing because we've worked with uh, local two and four year uh, junior colleges and universities to secure dual enrollment or articulation credit. So juniors and seniors can start to earn college credit early. So when they get to college, it's not where do I go to college or if I go to college, it's who's got my major and I've already got advanced standing to pull me along. Next slide, please. Um, and as we continue to move forward, right, looking at how we can include more educational programs in Scholastic Esports, um, we've also developed a middle school and community-based organization curriculum that really is uh, an early career exploration in all of the esports ecosystem domains. Um, and they're all PBL, so project-based. Um, they really focus on one domain each of the weeks. Um, but again, you know, this is really about looking at opportunities to create these potential pathways from middle school to high school to college. Um, and the curriculum, again, it, it's, it's designed to be adopted in different modules, or you can take the entire thing and implement it with your program. And there are nine and uh, 12 weeks 12 week variations, but again, it's all adaptable to your classroom. And I think part of what we do as NACEP is, uh, just like Kevin said, we aren't prescriptive, but rather additive. And we really wanna work with you to determine what works best in your programs. And so Kevin can talk a little bit about some of the bespoke work that we do um, specifically with some of the programs. This was fun. So you would imagine that uh, as we all began to hunker down in place starting in March, um, NACEP, changed the way it did business. We created a community club, we created something for students, but also something for teachers. And a lot of the ask was, first of all, how do we even digitize my, digitalize my content? How can I make it uh, accessible in a virtual classroom? And then, great, now you've helped me with, for example, my history course, how can I make this relevant through eSports? So in discussions with different history teachers, we actually broke it apart. First thing being, how can you see history in one of those four domains? And what happened was we broke out the history content, again, first by state standards, what you should be teaching at the different grade levels, and then the content that was appropriate. The fact that, as it says there, that history is cyclical allows us to organize the content in this way. So if you're a strategist, history plus strategy talks about how do I grow my civilization? How did Khan build his empire? How did China rise through the Tang Dynasty? What was international policy about? All of those are strategic elements, which also harmonize with esports. Then year over year, what you teach at ninth grade, 10th grade actually begins to spiral up through that cyclical pattern so that you can begin to touch those similar contents and then scaffold. Remember what you learned about ancient civilizations in sixth grade? Well, this is gonna come back when we get to 10th grade. We start talking about world history and culture, how a civilization began to define itself. And now we look several hundred, maybe a thousand years later, where are they now? What carried over? What now can be exemplified and leaned into. So this was just a small example of what we were able to do with something that isn't the first jump. We don't think of history plus esports, but we've shown that we can make inroads. Again, if the teachers are willing to consider how their content could fit into this paradigm and then what could be taught based on standards. 
And so on that note, thinking about the different variations of how Scholastic Esports can be integrated into your programs, uh, one of the things that we did in this last year is we had a group of Scholastic fellows that were all across the nation really working on developing curriculum modules that were particular to their um, you know, state standards as well as their student interests. And so you'll see here on the screen, there's a list of different modules, just to point out a few. Um, some unique ones like uh, Brad Stewart from Sam Welly Academy designed a video games and social science curriculum. I think Rene Barge would be another great one to point out. Um, he aligned all of his curriculum with his games and simulation CTE pathway and looking at how students can gain industry certifications with uh, Photoshop, Premiere and such, but really linking that to esports and their team. Um, again, multiple opportunities, and this is just the beautiful expression of how Scholastic Esports really does depend on your particular community. And so what we've done is compiled all of their curriculum modules into what we have uh, called the community library. So you can actually go right now on the website and check it out, and you can sort through um, all of the curriculum modules based by grade, subject area, standards, length of course, and state. Um, and what we've also done is all of the Scholastic Fellows have taken the time to record a short overview video um, actually walking through their curriculum modules. So it's a, as if you can sit down in a room with them and really get to know them as well as their intentions and educational outcomes with their modules. Um, and all of this is free again. You can download it, uh, PDF lesson plans. Uh, so I definitely encourage you to check it out. One of the other byproducts of the Scholastic Fellows was another project that we took on with the San Diego County Office of Education. Uh, two of the Scholastic Fellows um, worked on an esports and cyber wellness curriculum. Um, and so this was really, again, you know, thinking about, um, especially with distance learning in mind, thinking about some of the social emotional learning that we really want to integrate. And then also thinking about what are some ways that we can utilize some of these flipped classroom models um, to be able to successfully implement Scholastic Esports. And so um, all of the module with uh, this project there's three of them. There's Good Gamer, Tactical Teams, and Creative Competition. We've actually placed all of these in the Flipgrid uh, Discovery Library. Uh, so you can go in there, you can actually search NACEF now, um, and then find different little modules or different little topics that you can take and import directly into your Flipgrid classrooms. Um, you can also check it out on our website here at Cyber Wellness. Um, again, just another resource to help you get started. And I think what's great about this, especially for those of you that are brand new, um, you know, you can take little snippets of it and just try it out with your students and see how they react. And that's really, again, you know, looking at all of the diverse implementation of Scholastic Esports across the nation. Um, it, all it takes is just to start somewhere. And then from there, it'll grow into something new. And I think um, as we go along, I think wellness and social emotional learning is going to be an emphasis for NACEF. And so Kevin can talk a little bit more about our Play Well, Be Well initiative. That's where we go. So this is now actually battle tested. We uh, did a focus group with a bunch of very savvy and very diverse uh, high school seniors from Florida. And, and we took them through an exercise. We showed them this uh, new logo and what this acronym means. And then actually made them think a little bit about what do they do to get ready to play? Had them literally check in physically. How do I feel today? Did I eat? Do I feel kind of tired? Do I have a bottle of water nearby so I'm ready to go if I'm going to game? Had them talk about it. Had them talk about what their kind of goals and aspirations were. Were they more gamer, more academic? We let them play actually around a fortnight and then got them out, got them a debrief, and then had them do physical exercise. We watched 28 kids all do push-ups and burpees and yoga stretches only for about seven minutes and then turned them loose in the game. And to the person, boys and girls, they all said, wow, I actually notice a difference. Even if it was a placebo effect, they felt that they were more aware, more acute with what they were doing in the game, better able to listen to what their colleagues were saying, better able to execute against strategy. And that was with seven minutes of exercise. So we know we're onto something. There's a right way to sort of package this and get it out to different students. And this is something we look forward to being able to offer to all of you. So as uh, Jarrell just said, you can condimentize this. You can drop this into your curriculum, even if it's a history class, certainly if it's a math or a science class, this is good content that can boost anybody's uh, discipline. 
And there we go. We have, of course, at anybody's beck and call, activated clubs, general managers have access to all these various toolkits. There are dozens of them now. Uh, and again, these are also ready to drop in as content uh, into a classroom setting. Typically, I see clubs use these general managers were say responding to kids, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, we want to be shoutcasters. We want to be able to use content and use tools to be able to stream what it is we're doing in our club on game day. And a general manager may be a band leader or a biology teacher and have no idea what the kids are talking about. But there's a toolkit for that. So we task the kids and say, great, you go use that, download that, become the knowledge expert. You're going to teach it back to the rest of the group who wants to be that person in our, in our club. Well, another way to use these toolkits, take them as content nuggets and drop them in where it's appropriate. So English class, maybe you don't do a report in front of the class, maybe you take it and you stream something, you do an interview and start early and learn how this can work. You're learning STEM uh, technique, you're learning career opportunities, and you're also doing what you need to do for your English class. And I think what this really speaks to is just, you know, how dedicated we are as NASEF to continue to provide these tools and resources to ensure your success in implementing Scholastic Esports. And we realize that moving forward into this new, uh, you know, interesting era of education, um, part of what that is, is really thinking about the virtual and hybrid uh, environments. And so this is brand new. We just released this. Um, we have today. a hybrid clubs <laughs> toolkit. Yes, today we just released it. Um, and essentially, this is just a toolkit to help frame your thinking, especially as we enter into this new year. What are the types of tools that I can utilize to continue connecting with my students and with my club? What are some of the activities that I could potentially facilitate in these virtual and hybrid club environments or school environments? Um, so you'll, you can check it out now. Uh, again, just suggestions. I think part of this is really to emphasize the fact that there is no one tool that works for everyone. Uh, essentially, that's going to be dependent upon your particular, um, you know, school site, uh, obviously what's approved, and then really think about what you're already using and how you can really tap into that. So things like if you're a Google, uh, Google school, then utilizing Google Classroom, right? Or if you're a Microsoft school, using Microsoft Teams. Um, and then we've also included a nice little clip of a webinar um, that you can check out where we talk through uh, some of these ideas. So uh, again, really just trying to provide you with every resource possible to ensure your success. And uh, just so you all are aware that all of this is free, that's the big F word, as Kevin would say, uh, from <laughs> activating a club uh, to the curriculum, to in-person and virtual support, um, access to game licenses, and then uh, coaches for those that participate in our competitions. And this is all paid for by several charitable foundations, all headed by the Sam Wally Foundation, who really are interested in ensuring that all students gain access to this. Um, so if you are interested, I know many of you have already activated clubs, but for those of you that are new, uh, you know, first thing to get started is just go to our website, check out all the amazing things, and hit that big blue button on the top right and activate. And from there, you'll gain access to pretty much everything. And I think part of this, you know, it's not just clicking the button and you're there. Uh, we're here to work with you as you're going on this journey in Scholastic Esports. Um, so I want to thank everyone for attending today, for listening in. I know it's a lot of information. Uh, we do have a little bit of time to um, answer some questions in case any of you, you know, have any comments, questions, or concerns. So why don't we go ahead and open up the lines. Um, if you'd like to unmute and ask a question, feel free. Sure. Thank you, Mark, reading the chat. Uh, we appreciate the, the huzzahs and great comments. Uh, again, as Jarrell said, what NASEF's goal is, we build these things and we are responsive to you. Uh, so if there's something of interest that comes up and you're thinking, great, how would I do this for a physics class? Or how does this work with traditional physical education? Is there, is there a cross linkage? What can we do to walk that over? Uh, love to entertain those discussions. That's something that Jarrell and his group of Scholastic Fellows actually would be working on this next school year. That whole group's charge is to look at curricular elements and what may be important, especially now in a virtual reality where lots of things are being cut off and kids don't get access to things that they would traditionally have in schools if they were able to get together. 
um, helping you work through those, even if you just want a sounding board, a partner, just to bump that up against. Both Jarell and I are credential teachers, so it's not just because we're cool guys that we really love video games, though we do. Uh, we teach as well, so we're here to work with you in partnership to help take this where you might want to go. And I'm seeing some mics open, so if you just introduce yourself so we know who your voice is and fire away. Hey, this is uh, James O'Hagan. Sorry yes, you don't get is. to see me today. All rise. Okay. No, stop it. So <laughs> I, hey, I just got to say, uh, yeah. I'm looking at the, and I just put it in a chat, but I am looking at the resources that you all put together here in the community. Sorry, that's a valve that's stuck in my office. If you hear a squeaking sound. Um, I'm just looking at this for the first time and I'm really impressed. I mean, and it, I think it goes to one of the things I threw into the chat earlier that I think everybody here needs to realize is there's a lot of, rush to get into this space right now and you've got companies and all sorts of people who are coming up with curriculum and of, of varying degrees and of varying levels i think that we have to be very particular about curriculum and and who is bringing it to us again kevin and jarell educators right i know kevin you've done a tremendous amount of work before all of this and jarell you've worked a lot with the fellows um I, I i just have to say that having this community library accessible now with other curriculum that's been vetted and done by other educators, I think is, is a really important resource and I'm really excited to see this, so thank you. Thank you. Thanks, James. This is Robert Andrews from Jefferson, Georgia. Hi, Robert. Wanted to, um, uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation today. Mm -hmm. And also uh, ask you what you thought about uh, how the COVID-19 is affecting our uh, participation in esports. Will it affect anything as far as uh, the ability to participate in any fall uh, leagues in uh, NACEF? That's an interesting question. Um, I just asked this on a parent call earlier today and also yesterday about what does this look like when traditional sports are being shut down, kids can't participate. Esports already lives in this digital realm. All kids who play these kinds of games are used to the virtual nature of esports because what happens when you log into most games? You have to go into a digital lobby and you squad up. Whether you're looking for your friends or you're playing a pickup game, even if you're sitting at home on a console and you're playing NBA 2K or something like that, you're still going into a digital lobby and you're reaching out to whoever else is out there to be able to play. So kids are very much used to this. I think it's we as educators who are trying to wrap our heads around, is this good? Is this safe? What kinds of titles? Uh, what are they going to get out of this? And, and I think that really is where NACEF is strong, helping pick titles that we know work, that there is uh, not just implied, there's actual content that we can bump up against any of the titles that we're using. So yes, in, uh, in Minecraft, there's a lot going on with that for middle school and for high school. In League of Legends, you think that there is not heavy math, data analysis, calculus being used in those games. I will tell you, kids will show you otherwise. So we offer that and we know that because it exists in this virtual reality already, it's a very easy lift. It's easy for schools to consider this as another option, an elective option. Even now, let's just call it, this is going to replace traditional sports for a while until we're able to get the clearance to go back and meet each other and play the other things that we love to do. Yeah, just I, to piggy, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go. sorry, Robert, go ahead, go ahead, Robert. I, I was just saying, I, I agree. I think this is the way it's going to have to go, uh, especially mm -hmm. for a lot of uh, places that are really in the hot zones. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting my uh, club off the ground this year and, and getting my kids involved. And even if they have to do it from home, I'm pretty sure we can, we can handle that. So, yeah. The beauty of the world now is that so many games are available cross-platform, so you don't need uh, a souped-up Alienware, you know, a computer rig to play. You don't even need that. You need just something that's able to get out to a good browser, and you've got a decent video card. Uh, but the fact that you can play on any of the gaming consoles that are typically out there, Rocket League is a great example. Play it on a PC, play it on a PS4, play it on Xbox, play it on your phone. I mean, there's great way great accessibility so all kids have a way to get into this in some way Jarrell, what were you going to say yeah and that that's kind of the point that i was going to make is you know it's an exciting space uh but it's also important to be intentional as you're moving forward in this and thinking about your particular student community so especially in a virtual context as kevin was um you know talking about crossplay i think that's part of this journey is is understanding what your students have access to what they are playing at the moment and how you can take that interest and then you know you as the adult and the general manager or the teacher 
just bring that together and allow for them to express themselves and express their interests. So I think that's, you know, as you're getting started, just make sure that you're keeping the students at the center, you know, with all the decisions that you're making. And if anything, involve them in the decisions that you're making uh, as much as possible. I will do that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robert. Michelle, I see your mic open. Michelle Brown, have you got a question? No, I just got the message to unmute, so I unmuted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're on the spot. Now you have to ask a question or make a comment. So it seems like Minecraft has recently been re uh, released to one-to-one -one Chromebooks. That's all mm -hmm. our kids have. And in our district, it's really important that we um, value equity and not, not give something that some students can't participate in. Right. Is there anything beyond Minecraft that is suitable for one-to-one -one Chromebooks? Lots. I spent, and actually we've got Christopher Perez on the phone as well on the line here. I sound like the old radio days I used to be on here. Who's on the line from the Valley? Christopher Perez works with uh, thinktogether.org, a huge after-school program and um, um, community-based organization here in California. And I helped work with them to design a five-week summer camp for them, all for Chromebooks. There were hiccups in the IT part, but not with the games, the premise, or the content. So um, we've chosen a, a palette of games, or four or five we chose. Uh, some of them teach re in a really great way, things like internet safety, how do you make sure you're safe, your, your data, how do you not succumb to phishing, or things like that, how do you make sure you don't respond to trolls when you're playing a game, all gradiated for elementary school and middle school kids. So definitely have all kinds of ability to put different kinds of games out there that serve different needs. And I'm happy to discuss that with you offline. That is part of the content we'll put up there for you. Uh, but there are definitely options for Chromebook. And that really is sort of our, our low level limit. If we can do things on Chromebook, or we can go to the moon. We can do all kinds of things. So we definitely have things built for Chromebook for you. Great, I'd love to hear more about that. All about it, good. Yeah, and just to, again, play off of that, I think part of that is, you know, while you're thinking about games, I think what's more important is to think about the learning that's happening around the right. ecosystem, right? And Kevin really does a great job of carving out with the curriculum, the primary focus being, you know, the careers and some of the activities around sort of the career development. And then the game is just an afterthought, right? That's something that they can do as like the, the purposeful play, right? Really focusing on that they can do within the game but the emphasis really is on learning that's it i mean chris can tell you about that chris i know you're online listening uh the game becomes the lab it's the proof that if we talk about for example economics and we want to talk about entrepreneurship we used uh, a game called roblox and that is a uh, sort of a play platform it's got a variety of games thousands of games on it we looked at one called working in a pizza parlor so elementary and middle school kids pick one of five jobs and they did that job. And their goal was, let me see if you can figure the best way to deliver pizza to a bunch of houses over a great big sort of a, a Minecraft looking neighborhood. But the quicker you do this, the more you make a virtual paycheck. And the, go the goal was, how can you be smart, apply strategy, but then also economically, how can you get the biggest paycheck for yourself showing that your work actually earned you something? Uh, so you pick one of those five jobs, we'd rotate the kids through the jobs and they would screenshot their best attempts at things to prove that, hey, I'm getting really good at this. I get what I need to do to stay involved and stay at work. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? all looking for our email addresses again, uh, so you can reach out and contact. Easiest way is to type in info at nasef.org, and that is our general mailbox that is attended many hours throughout the day, and that is parsed out to whoever needs that. So if it's a curricular question, it'll find Jarell or me. If it's a Scholastic Fellows question, it'll go right to Jarell. If it's a general tournament question, it goes to our tournament management team. So. Whatever you have, info at nasef.org, it'll find the right person and we'll get back to you really quickly to start the conversation on whatever it needs to be for you. Let me check chat really quickly. I know Michelle is also looking at chat. There you go, she just put that in there. Good, good, good. I love those ideas. Thank you, Mark. We try to have a bunch of them. Sometimes they're good and they win. 
Other times it is uh, Edison, 9,999 ways to make a light bulb. <laughs> and we're in the middle of the shop going, nope, that's it, that won't work. If not, we're happy to give you time back in your day. Please go out and uh, take a look at that NACEF website, go and experiment and look. Uh, and that'll generate some questions. We're sure we're here to work with you. So we hope to see you on future uh, general manager and NACEF calls. I know we have one coming up next week, Tuesday, for those who are in the GM bucket and you're doing things like that. We'll be in uh, episode number five of six that we're presenting, talking about GM dashboards, how to use the NACEF content once you've got an activated club, and specifically leaning into our Discord channel, how you can get the most bang for your buck in Discord. It's people like you that are in this giant community that really help drive what it is we're doing. So look forward to seeing you on that and other NACEF functions. Till then, stay well, stay safe. We'll see you all really soon. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone.